Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. This is the place where we take a no bullshit look at life's little lessons. Here, together, we find the spiritual glory in even the most wicked hard story. This is a journey from fear back to love and how we can find our greatest strength and happiness in some of the most unlikely places. I believe that if you're willing to change your mind, you can totally change your life. So, are you ready to rewrite your story and choose to live free? Let's do this. Hey, you guys, and welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. I'm so excited. I have one of my friends here with me today. So I could just like launch into why I love Kelsey. So Kelsey Abbott is her name. And I'll tell you a little bit more about her in a second. But um, I could just launch into a thousand and one reasons why I love her. It would be like a 20 minute intro. So I'm going to just try to rein it in a little bit. <laughs> Put up the little bumper, the bumper things like in the bowling alley to keep myself on course. I'm going to read you guys her um, bio just so you get a sense of who she is and how she is in the world. And then we're going to, I'm going to let her like introduce herself a little bit. And then we're just going to dive in you guys. You're going to love her as much. I have no doubt you were going to love Kelsey as much as I do. So I think of her in a lot of different ways, but this is the official, the official bio. She is an intuitive human design reader. And if you're like, KK, what's human design? You're going to learn all about it today. So sit tight, get a pen and paper because you're going to want to write some things down. That's all I'm going to say. She's a human design reader. She's a certified professional coach. She's an instigator of joy. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to be an instigator of joy? And she's also the host of the Find Your Awesome podcast. And I have been lucky enough to be a guest on her amazing show. And she helps spiritual adventurers remember who they are and why they're here so they can up level with ease. Oh, right? Ease. That's so key for me. <laughs> she believes that the universe wants us to be sparkly as fuck. She says AF in her bio, but that's what it means. <laughs> sparkly AF. And that joy is our natural state. And I 100% agree with that. When Kelsey isn't playing in her business, she's bringing curiosity, play, and joy to triathlon, a sport she races as an elite amateur. She also has an amazing dog who I love, which we will talk about that a little bit probably too. She's got an awesome sweetie she's married to. She lives in Florida where it's amazing. And uh, Kelsey, welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. I'm so excited to be here. And I love, oh, I just love your energy shifts into like a little baby KK. And I love it. I so see you as like a like five-year-old just bopping along and you're adorable. I get really excited. I love doing my podcast. Like I love getting to connect with people. Like, and I often do mostly solo shows. So I'm normally doing this alone, sitting up in my room, like a little weirdo talking to myself, but I mean, talking, you know, talking to the people, but there's no immediate feedback. So when I have a guest and especially if it's a guest, like I only have people on, even if I do that like once a month. So, you know, if somebody's on my show, there's a reason why they're here. And it's either because I just adore them, I love them, but it's always also right. The heartbeat of this podcast is about spirituality and storytelling. And it's about kind of like how we make our way in the world. And, you know, it's the whole act of like story to your glory and how we take, um, you know, who we were as children and the things that happened to us, these stories and how we kind of find our way in the world and we can flip the script and discover things. And you have a really interesting act, like to your story <laughs> and, and your life and like how you find yourself now, like doing uh, like human design and just kind of, I mean, you're, you're really always because you're so curious and you love to learn too and play you're always learning more and more and more so every time i talk to you it's like another level of like knowledge has been like kind of added to the to the awesome cake that already exists so if you were like if i were to just bump into you like at a party um or an event and i was like hi i'm kk blah 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 like what would you say about yourself like how do you kind of like self identify um because i know in some areas of your life people know you as this kick ass triathlete other people knew you when you were like in marine biology and other people knew you when you were like over here so where are you kind of floating in the pond right now around all of it 
Oh, that's such a good question. And it's so hard. I never know what to say about myself. Like <laughs> sometimes I'll be formal and be like, it's, it's, you know, depending on the audience, maybe I'll say I'm a certified professional coach. Maybe, but I think like what came up for me, the first thing that came up for me is I feel like I'm a super curious human. Exactly. Right. Like we, we right both share there. that. We both kind of share that because um, it's the same thing. Like Americans, especially, hold on, I got to take a sip of water. Americans, especially uh, when you first meet them, they go into, so what do you do? And I always go, I do a lot of shit. I don't know. Like, what do you mean? What do you want to know? What they're really, what they usually really mean when they ask you that is how do you make your money? That when people say, what do you do? They're like, how do you make your living? Right? Like, what's Which your is, job? It's, it's so such a weird thing to go ahead and ask someone when you first meet them. Like, oh, so, so I want to, that's not what I want to know. I want to know, like, who are you as a human? What are you excited about? What, is, what makes your heart beat fast? Well, I think people feel like, and you and I are kind of the opposite in this way, right? Than, than the average bear, because we're like, because, right, the, the normal, let's think about the questions, right? There's the, the list you avoid, like sex, uh, weight, food, like that kind of thing, um, religion, money, and there's an, uh, politics. Like these are the lists, like we kind of don't start there, but we're really happy asking things like usually, where do you live? Where are you from? What do you do? Are you married? Do you have kids? I always ask if you have pets, like almost right away. Like if you have animals in your life, like, like kids, like I get, like, I'm not being mean people with kids. I love you kids. Don't get me wrong. But I'm always like, do you have any pets? Like I get really excited, <laughs> right? The things that, so we tend to lead with you and I tend to lead with things. I think that excite us that we're curious about because we're wicked curious and you know how you make your money. If that's what lights you up, if your work is how you self-express your spirit and your joy, we, I can talk about it all day long. Amen. But it's not really where you kind of dive into things. Well, I just realized, I think we both are following the energy. So like, you know, if someone's got animals, like I want to hear all about your animals. And yes, tell me about the cute thing your doggy did yesterday because, and yes, I want to see the video. Yes, I do. <laughs> because like, if that lights you up, I so want to be in your energy. And so, yeah, if your work totally lights you up and you're going to express that when you're talking about it, yes, tell me about it. But if you're going to be really boring, <laughs> and and like not lit up about your work right you're just gonna report the facts not, like we're not that we're no, not we're not with I'm you out <laughs> well I think that um it's been interesting for me knowing you because I've known you for um I don't how many years it's been like maybe four years five I don't even know how long it's been no it hasn't been that long three years maybe <laughs> roughly or maybe two and a half I don't know what it is but I feel I like I've known at least you. three yeah I feel like I've known you for a really long time but I've been kind of watching you. Like I, I, when I first met you, my, my impression was, and I mean, met you like online, right? It was like, oh, badass triathlete. And then it was like, oh, she's a certified, she's a coach. She's a mindset shifter. Like, but I have never seen you more lit up. Now, granted, I haven't seen you on race day. I haven't been there while you got in your, you know, your little, your little uh, singlet on, getting ready, transferring bike, whatever. You're probably madly in your joy there too. But the most lit up I have ever seen you be is this current place where you're kind of like doing things, which is in, in human design. But I want to just share about, just tell us a little bit of background about like, you know, where you grew up. Um, you know, I just kind of like to know like where the, so I have a t-shirt that says, um, it's a picture of Massachusetts, like an outline of the state. And it says Lawrence Mass. It's where my story begins. So I always kind of like to ask people, like, so where did your story begin? And, um, and we don't have to go down the whole rabbit hole because, of course, your childhood informs now, like, some of those things. So we can talk about that as much as you want. But I know the energy is around human design, and I've never seen you more lit up. So I want to definitely spend a good amount of time talking about that. But just give us a little boop, boop, boop back up. All right. So if you're looking on that picture of Massachusetts, yeah. I'm from the other Cape, Cape Ann. Uh, Manchester, Mass is where my story begins. And I used to say that, um, I used to ask people, have you heard of the perfect storm? The movie, the book, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from where that happened. And then this movie came out called Manchester by the Sea. Yeah. Won some Casey awards. Affleck. Yeah, apparently it's horribly depressing. I have no <laughs> desire to see it. Um, but that was filmed in my hometown. Fantastic. So that's where you grew up. And you have siblings? 
No, I'm an only child. I have so many only child children, I was going to say, in my life right now. I'm married to an only child. And Meg, our beautiful friend Meg Haynes, is an only Mm -hmm. child. And we talked about that because that did actually affect um, and play a role in the work that she does now, like kind of that act and where it took her. Do you think that that shaped you into, like you and I were just talking about um, our chats and something that we have in common around like, learning for ourselves. So I imagine as an only child, you didn't have siblings reflecting stuff back to you, right? Or like those experiences. Mm -hmm. So do you think being an only child has shaped who you are as a person or as an entrepreneur or as a anything, a triathlete, as a coach? I think it has in some ways, but like my soul, just like your soul, chose the gift of being able to provide for oneself. And so- I mean, my soul probably knew I was going to be an only child. Your soul probably knew all the stuff you were going to face and knew that we needed these like little golden nuggets in our charts. Uh, So I feel like that more shaped it because I didn't really know. I I had a bunch of friends who were only children when I was a kid. And so we all hung out together. I didn't know that there was anything negative, perceived negative about being an only child until I got to college. And people said like, oh, Oh, you're an only child. You don't seem like one. You don't act like one. And I was like, "What? <laughs> what is that? What does an only child right yeah. act like? Quote unquote, act like, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I never really felt like an only child in that sense. Yeah. All right. So I want to just like we can talk about um, a thousand different things. I love that you consider yourself an instigator of joy, and I think that um, being able to help somebody come to know themselves better through human design is a way that you instigate joy in others because so much of it is finally giving people permission to be who they are, like to stop fighting their natural instinct of whatever it is. So let's dive into, because people I'm sure are like, there might be a bunch of people listening who are like, Oh my God, I love human design or other people who are like never heard of it before. So to the uninitiated, let's talk a little bit about what human design actually is, how you find yourself going from learning about it to now leading and teaching and offering readings for people, which if you're listening to this, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do a plug right now. Not even going to save it to the end. Do yourself a favor She'll drop the link. Uh, the link will be somewhere. We'll talk about it at the end too. Get a reading because it is A, so much fun. B, you're going to come to know yourself. So many things you're going to go like, oh my God, that makes so much sense now. So <laughs> talk to us a little bit about your human design journey. So I think it was like a year and a half ago, two years ago, I was talking to my friend Brooke on my podcast And she said something like, do you know, are you familiar with human design? And I was like, no. And I was like, what is that? Like, this sounds like something super sketchy. For some (laughs) reason, it made me think of like anti-evolution or like, I don't know where my mind went, but I was like, no, I do not know what that is. Um, And then I went investigating and looked up my chart and was like, what is this? I have no idea what to do with it because when you first see your human design chart, I mean, it's a bunch of shapes and oh, I know, in the body I, shape, and then there's numbers on the side and some weird symbols. Um, so then eventually, I was a manifesting generator, and the first thing I learned about manifesting generators was that we're called warrior Buddhas. And I was like, oh, well, that resonates, huh? What else can I learn? And I just gradually kept learning more and more and more until finally, I was like. Oh my God. Yes. This is me. I have been doing this my whole life. And this actually explains uh, just like every time I've tried to quote unquote be normal and then (laughs) I like tried on someone else's outfit for the day. All right. So here's what human design is on the surface. It's a combination between astrology, the I Ching, Kabbalah tree of life, and the chakra system. But here's, here's the way I think of it. Your little baby soul was hanging out wherever souls hang out and it got called to earth school. And it got so excited because it got to check off all the boxes for what it was going to choose for this round of earth school. Like what energy type, how was, how is your soul going to dance with energy? 
how, what's your personality going to be like? What, I call them golden nuggets. What gifts are you going to have? Like the one we were just talking about where we both have the, the ability to provide for ourselves. Mm-hmm. What golden nuggets are going to help this soul be the person it's supposed to be to do the things it's supposed to do? Because each one of us, I've been saying, you know, I've been saying for years, we're all here to change the world. Every single one of us is here to change the world. And I feel like I didn't have anything to like back that up until I learned human design. And now I'm like, see, you're all here to change the world. Come on, let's go. All in our own special way. Yeah. So it's so interesting. It's kind of like, um, I think about, I used to um, be in a relationship with somebody who was a sign language interpreter and he was genius at it. And it was always such a joy to watch um, him, you know, take spoken word and to move it into language with his hands and his face. Right. And, um, and that's how I kind of see you. I think like there's this information, but we need an interpreter. Like, because I remember the first time I downloaded, I heard human design, of course, wicked curious, want to know what it is, go online, punch in the thing, you know, where I'm born, my date of birth, all the stuff. <laughs> and then I get this chat and I'm looking at it and I'm like, literally, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this thing? And then you go to like, try to learn about it. And you're like, this sounds crazy. Like I don't eat like this. I was just like this guy who sounds like he's from another planet, like downloaded like this and saying this. And I was like, oh, come on. I just need somebody who's down to earth and grounded And I think that's kind of like what I do in my work as a spiritual man. I take kind of like these big, heady, kind of like spiritual principles. And now how do I actually apply it? How is it applicable in a practical, pragmatic way so that it actually makes sense in my day-to-day life? Because I'm not interested in having more theories and like ethereal things to just kind of sit out there. It's like, I want to get it dirty. I want to live it. I want to understand it, right? So I think that's what you do is you... People get their information, they give it to you, you get their chat, and then it's like, let me tell you about you. And it's like, just like, oh my God, like you, you start, it, it literally, it's just like, bing, 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 all these little lights. And it's like, oh, of course, like now it makes so much sense. And even with this podcast, I was talking about how fascinating it must have been for you when you first had your own chat read and then started reading chats and understanding the science and the art of this. And I bet so many things in your life, what you and I would call like the zigzag path the squiggly path of how we ended up doing the things that we do. Um, like all of a sudden it's like light bulb moments all over the place. You want to speak to that a little bit? Oh my God. Well, there's so many, there's so many things. So the first thing that came up for me before we get to my squiggly path was there are so many things that I knew that I kept being drawn towards that then people would tell me they were wrong. Like either they'd outright tell me it was wrong. I was supposed to do it another way or like, no, just like follow the way everyone else is doing it. And human design showed me like, guess what? This is the way you're supposed to do it. And when we follow our human design, when we lean into all the gifts that our soul painstakingly chose for us because it knew we were going to need it. Yeah. Then we do experience ease and flow. All right. So my path went, let's see, I majored in psychology, art history, and wait, psychology, art history, and biology, basically in college. Mm -hmm. Um, And oh God, I remember, so I was an athlete, I was a varsity swimmer and I went to Bowdoin, a D3 school in Maine, and that meant that you got, you got all these recruitment letters from investment banking firms, so which was hilarious to me. And I, all I knew, all I knew for sure is like, this is not what I want to do. Like, I know I want nothing to do with finance in yes. any way. Um, and then it, I remember going to the career counseling office and they were like, okay, you don't want that. So do you want to go to law school? Or do you want to go to med school or do you want to be a teacher? And I was like, what? No, 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 I guess like by default, I was like, I don't know. I guess maybe if I have to choose one of those, I'll somehow go to vet school. 
So I went to Hawaii and I studied dolphin behavior and health. I love dolphins so much. Can we just pause on that? Because yes. I love dolphins so much and they're so smart and they're so happy and they're just like the little, I don't know. They're like the little, like sometimes there's so many sea creatures that I'm obsessed with, but dolphins, we, we feel so connected to dolphins. I think people, humans just naturally love them. Any, mm -hmm. so I know I don't want to go too far off the path, but do you love dolphins? I do love dolphins. Is there, love... is there a couple of things you want to tell us about dolphins that we just like either might be surprised about or a little nugget, a golden nugget about dolphins? So I, these golf, dolphins were in captivity. Mm -hmm. They would not have survived in the wild and they lived in captivity their whole lives. And um, they had such distinct personalities. Yes. I love them so much. So one of them really, she was, she was just wicked smart. <laughs> and she would go, so they would get a fish for if something fell in their tank and they went and got it. Like if a leaf fell in their tank, they went and got a leaf. They'd bring it to us and they'd get a fish. So they'd like go get the leaf, pick it up, come to the edge of the tank, whistle. And you'd be like, oh, okay, hold on, come with me. And they'd come down towards the end where the fish room was. You'd give them a fish and they'd go off happily. So one dolphin was like, this is sweet. And she found like a little place in the tank where the paint was peeling a little bit and so she'd go and chip off a little pieces of paint and then come bring it to the edge of the tank and whistle and be like i got this garbage in the tank and so give, her a, give her a fish for that so smart you know that's the thing like people we're you know as animal lovers um you know we we recognize uh the intelligence of other creatures and so um I could go, literally, sorry, I could go off, I could go down the, the whole vegan animal love, blah, 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 blah. But I just wanted to touch on that because it's not every day that you meet somebody who was like a dolphin trainer or was mm -hmm. like a studying dolphin. So that's like really cool. So you were kind of thinking about heading towards this, when you said vet, like veterinarian path. Yep. Whatever. So you're like, all right, I'm going to go study these. In A, in Hawaii, hello, amazing. B, dolphins, Jesus Christ, that's like the lottery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what happened after that? So after that, I went back to Massachusetts, did some internships with the New England Aquarium, eventually decided I didn't want to go to vet school, went to grad school instead to study marine mammal conservation and science. And I studied, well, before I went to grad school, I did, my now husband, then boyfriend, was getting his master's degree in coral reef ecology. Coral his, reef ecology? Yeah. Yeah. So studied little damselfish that are coral reef fish Aww. and he needed a research assistant and his research was in Barbados. So I got to go <laughs> and uh, do, do some research with him in Barbados diving every day. Oh my God. And are you then... a certified diver too then? Mm -hmm. You have so many, you have so many little skills and talent. <laughs> Let's just recognize that. Look, I think you're so cool. Okay. I love being underwater. My <laughs> favorite place in the world is being underwater, looking up and seeing the sun filter down oh through the water. Oh my God. Yeah. I feel that. I can feel that. Mm. Warm water. Warm w water. Yeah. Warm. <laughs> <laughs> so then marine biology, like boom, like, you know what, like triathlete, you're already, so you're already like nailing the swimming portion, right? Yeah. Like, and I did that? I started then, so then I went to grad school, I studied killer whales, but my first weekend there, I'd made a couple friends, we were all squished into this car together, and one of them said, hey, are you going to do the Duke Triathlon? And I was like, what? What's that? And it was like two weeks away, and I had this vision in my head that, yeah, I was going to do a triathlon someday, but I was going to do it well. Like, I was going to train for this. I was going to know what I was doing. And here it is, the universe is showing me, like, there's a triathlon in two weeks. There's no training that's going to happen before this. And yeah, you have a mountain bike, so guess this is what you're using. So that was my introduction to a triathlon. And then when I was doing my thesis the next year, I was like, we. so it seems like all we're supposed to do is, like, our schoolwork. I don't understand that. Like that doesn't fly for me. Yeah. So I found a race and I signed up for it and I bought a training plan and I trained legit for a triathlon. And then I was like totally head over heels in love and was like, how can I do this all the time? 
Yeah, and so I'm pretty sure everybody knows what a triathlon is, but there's different stages or lengths of triathlons, but it's basically like swim, bike, run. So you do all three activities the same day, and some of them are like hardcore <laughs> and take people like 11, 12 hours or more to finish. Um, I don't some, like those ones, though. Yeah, the, the Ironman length ones. Yeah. The, I like going fast. Yeah, so if you look at Kelsey, right, not to objectify your body, but your body, like you, you, like you're tall, like you're tall, you're lean, you're a little, little machine, right? Like, so you liking to go fast. I'm like, you, you, you are kind of designed in my mind to go fast. Like, I think mm-hmm. you were, your body is, your little soul gave you the right body to yes. do the things you love to do. It gave me a little engine. Yeah, a little engine that go. could. And so, and that's like for you, like, cause we talked about this, right? In relationship to your chat, I think you naturally, please correct me because I know I'm going to flub this up, but it's something like you naturally kind of like generate your own energy. So staying motivated for long periods of time or something like that is easy for you or natural for you. Am, am I, is that kind of right? Yeah, there's two pieces here. One, you and I both, you're a generator. I'm a manifesting generator. We both have our, both our own engines. And when we're doing something that lights us up, we create our own energy. And then I've got a defined heart center, which is, this is confusing. This is where human design gets confusing because the heart center is also known as the ego center. It's also known as the will center. Um, Three names, same thing. 70% of people have this center undefined, which means their motivation comes in waves, which is you, KK, like you call them seasons. And then 30% of us have it defined, which means we have strong, consistent motivation. Which is perfect for somebody who's training for like big events and things like that, especially things that take a lot of I think mental stamina too and physical stamina. And so, it's a funny thing because we, I think because so many of us have that like motivation that comes in waves, people tend to ask like, how do you stay motivated? Looking for like, do you have a trick, something outside yourself that keeps you motivated? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I just like to do it. This is so, what I do. <laughs> yeah. So I would love, you know who David Goggins is, don't, right? Yep. I would love to know what Goggins chat says. Like I would be fascinated to to see if who he is now is Goggins because that he literally that's his alter ego right like Goggins mm-hmm. is, is so there's David Goggins and there's Goggins and um, I, I kind of wonder if Goggins is the true manifestation of his chat or if Goggins is in rebellion to the like I wonder if he has a wave but he makes himself have a constant. Like I would be fascinated to know, like to know these things. But so here's what I know. If I was a listener right now, I'd be like, that's great, Kelsey. We love hearing about you and KK, but we want to know what we are. Like in what, what are the, like you keep saying generator, manifesting generator, like what? So can we just give them a little tiny, like cliff note um, peek into the different things that you quote unquote can be, right? You're different, like, t- you know, whatever, you know? But just break it down a little bit about what the different ones are and maybe um, kind of like where, what, like a few golden nuggets or one or two golden nuggets about each one. Yeah. So people can maybe self, not, until you get your chat read, because sometimes I would be curious about this too, and I know I'm throwing a lot at you. When you hear certain descriptions, I wonder if sometimes people are like, I want to be that one, even if they aren't that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's a lot of a lot of times when people hear like misinformation about the types there's a lot of like jealousy um and there can <laughs> be around some other stuff too i i love that reflectors are when they're in flow they're surprised and i was like i want to be surprised but okay right. let me okay. back up <laughs> so human design this the like top level of the iceberg is the energy types there are five energy types and just quickly when we go below the energy types, then there's the profiles, which is the numbers, like a three, five or a four, six. Then you go into the centers. There are nine centers. They can be defined or undefined. Then within the centers, you've got gates and you've got channels. So there's like, oh, there's so much. You can go there. down and down and down the rabbit hole. Yes. Oh, and then there's the arrows and the arrows each have like all these different layers. And the numbers right now. and the yes. symbols and the, all of it. <laughs> We're just going to talk about the energy types. So you don't need to figure out which of these types fits you because your soul already figured it out. Your soul checked off all these boxes thinking like, you know, what gifts it wanted to give you and then chose where you were going to be born, what time, what day. And that like solidified who you are 
and how you're going to show up in this world. So, so let me just interrupt really quickly. So, and I apologize, I'm being rude, but I, I want to, I like to, I want to make it really clear. So when you just said it in that order, like the soul decided where you'll be born, when you'll be born, all these different things. So the way that a human design reader like you figures out or helps people understand which one they are is they give you that information and then you report back, well, this is the one, this is your yes. energy type of the five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So five energy types. Woohoo! There, there are generators, manifesting generators, projectors, manifestors, and reflectors. So generators, that's KK. That's me. You guys are, and this is uh, generators are the most common type followed closely by MGs which is what I call manifesting generators because that word is just too long for me. Right. Um, so generators, generators and MGs both are, um, the universe is our personal shopper and the universe is constantly showing us things that might light us up and inviting us, hey, what do you, what do you think of this? Do you like it? Do you not like it? And our body responds to those things. Either we're like, mm, nah, not really that into it. Or like, oh my God, yes, tell me more about this. And it's like this, you feel a full body lit Amen. up. Amen, yes. And for both generators and MGs, when we are lit up, that's what makes us sparkly AF. That's what enables us to elevate everyone around us. We are not here to sacrifice ourselves to be lit up. All right, or let's to say that. sacrifice ourselves to lit up, light up other people. Yeah, let's, let's, let's shout that loud mm -hmm. to the back of the room. So yeah, generators, you're not here to sacrifice yourself to help other people. You help other people by being sparkly AF and it's your sparkle that elevates other people. So your job generators is to be lit up. That means it is your job to do what lights you up. It is your job to follow your desires. Amen. Ale. Hallelujah, which explains so much like in my group, co my, my business coaching program that I was in for two years, right? We got, I, you and I have talked about this before. Like I got the big book of marketing, all the strategies, all the things I could do, learning about businesses all year long, like every week, more material about how to market and launch and do this and do this and do this. And I would just be like, yeah, I don't really want to do that or that or that or that. And then when they told me, Bill Barron, my business, my business, former business mentor, uh, dear friend now, said to me one day, all right, you want your marketing strategy? And I was like, yes, lay it on me. Like, you know, and he said, go out in public and be yourself. <laughs> I was like, that I can do. Like, that makes so much sense. And I was just like, oh, that's all I wanted to hear. And I didn't know that I needed to hear it. So this is why the readings with Kelsey are so helpful and powerful and impactful and fun is that you realize like all these fucking boxes that the rest of the world's trying to shove you in and all the shoulds and all the do this, do this, the strategy, da, 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 da. For those of us who fall into generating an MGs, that just feels like, oh, suck it in a bucket. Like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, right? I mean, it just means- Yeah, so although if you're a generator in, in, or an MG and, or you're, if you're any type and you're a, what we call a specific manifester, which is just another piece in your chart, then you might be lit up by that stuff. By the structured if, stuff. If you're lit up by structure and strategy, go, go forth and have fun with it. But I am, and you are, what, what's that next little level da or depth is non-specific, right? Yep. So non-specific people are just like, give me the buffet and let me pick what like lights me up and then I'll run with it. Because yes. when we're lit up, I really feel like, like it is like you said, it is a full body yes. Or what I would say, double amen hands. Like mm -hmm. I feel that so deeply. And I feel like when I'm lit up, like I'm unstoppable. Like my energy, like I'll, I'll wake up first thing in the morning and I'm like, let's go. Like I, it's hard to sleep sometimes when I'm in that place because it's yep. like, you're so excited and the energy is just like churning. Like, yeah. So, all right. So manifest right. and, and a little bit more about, um, our MGs, how are they different than, uh, manifesting generators? How are they different than generators? So MG is we zigzag. So we go from a to 67 to yellow to to q 
that is our style. So we may have been labeled as flighty or inconsistent or just all over the place. And that is our style because we pick up things pretty fast. And we like the universe is showing us these things, offering us this, these things because there are places where we're going to learn something. So we need to go, I needed to go be a marine biologist. Yes. Because I'm going to use those skills going forward. I don't need to know that in the future. I just need to keep following my desire, keep going, keep going, keep going, and just bouncing all over the place. MGs, we are here to play, to do things people thought were impossible with joy and play, and to show everyone else that that's possible. We are round pegs that are not meant to fit in square holes, and we're here to show everyone else that it's safe to be a weirdo. Awesome. So, and I can relate. (laughs) I can relate to some of that. And I think there'll be pieces, right, of all of the different five energy types that we go, oh, like I resonate with that little piece or whatever. Yeah. So we all have all of the five energy types in us. And what your chart labels you as, whereas the like generator, manifesting generator, projector, et cetera, that is your dominant energy type. Yes. So you're everyone is going to resonate with every type. It's kind of almost like in Ayurveda when they talk about the doshas. Mm -hmm. Are you you pitta, vata, kapha, right? So there's a little bit, but you definitely have dominant kind of ones. And I think that that's like um, a little bit what you're finding here. And I, and I love that it's an art and a science. And I think that like, I'm fascinated and you, you know, I don't even know if you could answer this. It's not even really a question. It's more of an observation. I'd be fascinated to see like, once you know what the, like what the five energy types are, like you said, there's like that jealousy, like, oh, I wish I was more like that when it's like, oh, well that, that's a little bit in you. Like you could probably like strengthen that or like whatever. Right. I assume so that. Yeah, actually let's move on to reflectors because so reflectors have all of their centers are open. Whereas all the energy types have at least one defined center. A reflector embodies the wisdom around them. So, oh my God, if you want to really see yourself sit with a reflector, like they are like empath isn't that word isn't big enough for what they are they are disco balls of magic so they (laughs) just like embody and reflect the wisdom around them so and a reflector needs to their like course in life is about becoming comfortable with with being totally free from labels totally free from boxes and recognizing that they are everything and nothing and last week for me oh my goodness. It was like, I want to do all the things I want and I want to do nothing. I have so much to say and I have nothing to say. And it was a moment of like, I am everything and I am nothing. Oh, like last week I was a reflector. Yes. It's kind of like that. Like how in A Course in Miracles, we say everybody is special and nobody is special. Yes. There's this thing. It's just kind of like, and I understand that it's like, oh, I have so much to say and like, whatever. And then if you go to post and then you're like, yeah, I don't really like, it's like, it's like, can I have a foot in both worlds? It's like, yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. you can. So with the reflector, would you say, let's say as a friend, are they people who are really good um, at seeing you and showing you, you like, so are they, are they good? Like what I would call a balcony person. Can they cheerlead you because they really see you and they can say, Hey, like, so I'm, I'm trying to like, think about it, taking it from like, kind of like this broad, universal, maybe to a more specific example, like, um, so So reflectors are going to do it by being you essentially when you're hanging out with a reflector and you're like, Oh my God, that person is so brilliant. Recognize that they're actually reflecting your own brilliance back at you. Fantastic. And vice versa. If you're like, that person's really just a jerk. (laughs) They're reflecting your own jerkiness back at you. Fantastic. So fascinating. All right. and Um, And reflectors are all totally totally different like if you find like generators living their design there's gonna be a lot of similarities mg's living their design there's gonna be a lot of similarities like it reflectors living their design can be totally different yeah and let's talk about that for a second because i know when i was first kind of coming onto the scene of learning about this all the like you know you read articles and stuff like that or about this so much like look you want to know just enough to be dangerous get on the interwebs but um, I kept seeing like 
oh, so-and-so's a generator, so-and-so's a generator. And I'd be like, oh, I don't know if I want to be a generator, <laughs> right? I was like, I don't, I don't know if that like feels really good. But you said you can be one of these types, for lack of a better word, out of alignment or out of balance, yes. right? And so if there's a, if you're a such and such out of balance, it looks like this. Yeah, we can't guess other people's types because we have no idea if they're actually living their design. So and that's what that's what you call that. So that's the the balance part, right? Is you can be living your design or not living your design. Yes, and just please, when you're going down the human design rabbit hole, everything you learn should make you feel like oh, like you're just leaning back into these loving arms of permission. If yes. anything you read makes you feel like Nikki. you can't do something or like puts you in a box, get out of there. That's not, that information is not for you. Human not design helpful. is for lifting you up. It is not for putting you in a cage. Yeah. I love that. So if you're reading something and it feels like, like limiting or like, oh, the other, the other, one of the other energy types is, um, better or more special <laughs> like it's like oh that, get out of there because everybody yeah. has their own genius i i do have a, a practical question about it i know that somebody has asked me this before about um um for um getting like astrology chat readings but it sounds like it also applies here what if there's a situation where you don't have your birth certificate like you know the day you were born in the hospital or the town or whatever but you don't know the exact time can they still get their chat read or i mean is it helpful i know it's helpful to have the time but what if you don't have access to it so you do need the exact time you do. um and if you say you guess that you were born at 8 30 but <clears throat> like you were actually born at 8 32 you probably your energy type is probably going to be the same. Your profile will probably be the same, but when it comes to the arrows, like the nitty gritty stuff might be off. There are astrologers that can help you apparently come up with your exact birth time. I don't know anything more than that. Like I, I know a few people have had luck with it, but. Yeah. I always say, I mean, I know that like um, online now, especially with ancestry.com, et cetera, et cetera, I think there's ways to access your birth information. It's record, unless you were, I mean, I'm sure in some cases of adoption or like whatever, whatever, um, you may not have the exact information, but I was curious about that. So thank you for answering that. Okay. So what about, um, there's also projectors and what else? After projectors that? and manifestors. Yes. So projectors, projectors are here to guide us and projectors are like birds <laughs> that are hanging out on a branch. And the rest of us are scrambling around on the ground. And the projectors can see the rest of us so clearly. So they're watching us like root around on the ground, wrestle and whatnot. And they're like, oh, you could have done it that way. They can see how we can tweak things so mm -hmm. easily. And they are here to guide us with love. And we need to be open to their guidance. Mm -hmm. So projectors... Their strategy is to wait for the invitation, which gets a lot of projectors really tangled up. And what it means is like projectors go for create your thing, be yourself. But if you're going to give somebody advice, wait until they invite you to do that. And that doesn't mean a like calligraphied invitation. Right. It just means like if somebody follows you on Instagram, that's an invitation. Yeah. So they are saying like, I am now open to your wisdom. It's so fascinating because um, so many people have said to me, so many, let, I'll say like around three, you know, <laughs> not to exaggerate, <laughs> but um, when, when the world, you know how it is, like all of a sudden, it was like, even with yoga, like all of a sudden, yoga had been here, you know, come over in like the 60s, but then it was like, oh, so, you know, like 10 years ago, all of a sudden it was like, pow, or whatever, you know, 15 years ago, it was huge. Um, it's the same thing with human design. So when it first started to come onto the scene, People, would, I can't tell you how many people said to me, um, you're, they thought I was a projector. They said, you're a projector, right? And I was like, I don't know, but I, I don't know why you would think that. But hearing that, the thing of like, because like you said, we have that little piece 
And I love to be able to kind of just sit back and observe and see what everybody's doing and go like, oh, interesting. Or I would have, you know, whatever. So um, that's when I, I think when I found out I was a generator, not knowing what it meant other than just seeing those examples and being like, oh, that doesn't resonate really with me. But now it like, when you told me about generators, I was like, oh, I'm t that totally makes sense. You know what I mean? So Yeah, a lot of, there, there's a lot of belief that like projectors are the ones to guide us. And so you're guiding us. So you must be a projector. In this human design space, it's like all projectors in me. And sometimes I'm like, so like which one of these doesn't belong? Oh wait, that's the story of my life as an MG. Right. <laughs> so whatever. Um, but the difference is like a projector is more likely to guide you yeah. and I'm more likely to play with you. Yeah. Wow. No. <laughs> I know that, that did give me an image of like batting something around like a kitty, but like, no, he, we play human design. I'm not yeah. going to like tell you how you have to do things. Yeah, you are definitely, you're a really good person to actually be doing human design readings because you don't like, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't put, there's no boxes, even around the boxes, the human design boxes. You're, you're not saying, here's what I've always felt about all kinds of things, anything that labels, right? Even with depressions or things that have, things that are malleable and move. Like something, even like I said, something like depression. I think when we label somebody like, oh, you're depressed or you're a Libra or you're a manifesting generator, like, because it can either widen and broaden our perspective or it can put us in a box if we don't, if we, if we let that label define us. And so I think you're a really great person to be doing readings because of your playfulness, you don't say like, so you're, it's more like, this is, this is a get out of jail free card. This is a permission slip. This is not a sticker or a label that you put on you to limit you. Yeah, no, That's this is a like wide open, spread your wings. This is what you're meant to be. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so finally we've got manifestors. Okay. And manifestors are they're really here to do what they want to do manifestors <laughs> get urges so like well generators get that that served that buffet from the universe yeah manifestors get these internal urges and they need to follow them and mgs we get this as well because manifesting generators are hybrid between manifestors and generators so we are lucky enough to get served the buffet and get the urges the urge is something that you can't explain it. Like you're just walking down the street and you gotta go jump in that pond. You gotta follow it, go do it. And then rest between the urges and trust that another urge is gonna come through. That is key for manifestors to flow with that urge because it comes from the divine and then rest in between, wait for the next urge. Manifestors are the ones who start movements. They're the energetic trailblazers. Mm. Have, I, would I wish there was like a place online because as we're talking and you're saying this, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if Gandhi was a manifester. I wonder if Jesus was a manifestor. Some of them you can figure out. Some of them are listed online. I looked up Eleanor Roosevelt earlier this week because she has the same birthday as me. Yeah. And she is also a four, six manifesting generator with the right angle cross of penetration. I uh, see. That's what I'm talking about. Like my heroes. Like I think about like, I'm like, I want to know what Mr. Rogers was and I want to know what Stephen King is. And I want to know what Martin Luther King Jr. is. And I want to know what, like all these things. I'm like, it will like, it will just make it even more sense. It will be like, Oh my God. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so powerful. So you guys, if you're listening, I'm sure some part of you, like some of you are like, uh, some people are just naturally going to roll their eyes and go, whatever. I don't believe in that stuff. But some of you I know are getting wicked excited <laughs> and you're like, Oh my God, I want to know what mine is. Right. And here's the thing, you guys, I don't refer or recommend just anybody. I say it all the time. When you're in an online space, right, which a lot of us live in now, but especially as entrepreneurs, um, and you start to like, you know, either get friends or followers or whatever the thing is, um, or get known for a particular thing, people reach out to me all, like just last night, randomly sitting in my house, somebody wrote to me and they're like, um, 
I don't want to give too much detail, but my sister just had this surgery. This has happened. Can you recommend vegan supplements, right? I've been vegan for like 18 plus years. So they know, I probably know some things, right? Like stuff like that. So people will write to me all the time knowing that I know a lot of people and they'll say, can you recommend my service? Can you do a shout out for my business? Can you do this? And I'm always like, mm. unless I've had the service myself, unless I've had the experience myself. So I, I will say to somebody, you know, I've never, if I'm going to recommend that way, I'll say I've never used their service personally. So I can't personally recommend it, but I've heard good things about this because I'm not going to attach my name <laughs> to something or give it the stamp of approval. My point being is that if Kelsey is on my show <laughs> and I've had the service and I'm telling you to get a reading, there's a reason why I'm doing that. It is literally like a little love letter from me to you because I think it's going to deepen some self-knowledge. I think there's going to be some aha moments. I think there's going to be some moments of relief where it's going to be like, oh my God, I finally understand why I'm that way. And I think like your chat, your human, human design chat, um, like good luck trying to figure it out on your own. That's why I say get an interpreter, get an interpreter and they can help you to understand not only what you're seeing on the chat, but how it relates to your life. And I just think it is such a super fun gift. And if you, and I, I understand that like we're in a time when it might seem like, this is what I always feel like. Self-knowledge to live an examined life is one of the most powerful things that we can do. So making an investment or ask for it for your birthday or whatever the thing is, but get into, or just start following Kelsey. If you're at a place where financially, maybe you're like, I can't afford a reading yet. She's dropping stuff on her Instagram like all the time, like little notes and like sometimes she'll find something and just send it to me. And I'm like, oh my God, I get so excited because it's helping me to understand myself even more. So you guys, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm giving, I'm giving Kelsey my little like, boop, a little stamp of approval. And I think it's a super fun, not only fascinating and helpful, but fun thing to get your chat read. So I want to just, I just want to open it up to you to like share anything else you want to say about human design. And, and because like I said, watching your act of how I met you first as a coach and this and this, like your energy, since you've been doing this, I don't know if you've heard this from other people, but you're, it's like, it's like your zone of genius. Like you've stepped into this portal yep. where now it just seems so effortless for you to just be like shining your this little light of mine it oh, is the, like i don't i don't understand how it works like people are like have you found your human design gate in your human design yet like have you found what makes it so that you're supposed to be doing this and i'm like i don't i don't know maybe like all of these are possibilities but yeah this thing that i knew nothing about like two years ago is now it lights me up so much. I love it. I love it so much. So what do you think for you? What do you think the thing is, right? So meaning when you're working with a client, what's the thing that you love the most or a couple of the things? I never like to be, when people are like, what's your, pick one quote or pick what's your favorite color? I always go, oh, no, no, no. You don't know who you're talking to. I'm going <laughs> to probably tell you three different things and why. But what's a, maybe the thing, what do you think it is that you are giving people or what lights you up about being able to have a reading? Because I know even when we're just boxing or texting um, and I've referred somebody or we have a mutual friend who told me that they're getting their chat done and I'll write to you and be like, oh, you're doing so-and-sos and you'll be like, oh my God, I can't wait. So partly it's fun for you, but what is it? about what you're delivering or whatever. I don't know if I'm asking the question in the most intelligent way, but do you, are you picking up what I'm trying to yeah. say? Yeah, so let me, a couple things. So right now, being in your energy, knowing your chart, being able to watch you use all of your gifts is so, it's so amazing. I get so excited about it. And like, and I keep, in, I keep um, referring people to our episode on the Find Your Awesome podcast, people who have open throats. I'm like, please go listen to the episode with Karen Kenny. That is how you use an open throat. That Because a lot of people end up with thyroid issues and every center is related to parts of our actual physical body. Thyroid issues or throat issues. And I'm 
go listen. If you want to know the proper, like the energetically correct way to use an open throat, go listen to Karen Kenny, please. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you. I don't even, I'm not even sure what, like exactly what that means, but like meaning like I do, but I, like I'm not went specifically to me because I have sometimes have a hard time seeing myself. But I think what you're pointing at is that I like, I do have a filter. I don't always use it, but you mean I just kind of genuinely say whatever I want to say. So like, you're an advocate for others. Oh yes. That. I love to cheerlead. I love that. to cheerlead other people. So people with an open throat are advocates for others. People with a defined throat are here to speak their truth about it, maybe it's their emotions or their self identity or their intuition or their opinions. It depends on the individual chart. But you, with an open throat, are here to advocate for others. Well, I get really lit up. It's why, it's why when I have a guest on the show, that's the only reason why I have guests on my show. I could easily, somebody with a big mouth, I can easily do solo episodes <laughs> to the end of time. Uh, but I like bringing on people because, again, if you're on my show, it's either just because I'm fascinated with you, I respect you or admire you, or you're doing work in the world that I think is important and I want more people to know about it. So let me, let me go back to, cause you, you kind of got sidetracked by giving me a compliment. So thank you so much. But like, but when you're doing somebody's chat for them is what you're saying. The, the reason why you love to do it is because you kind of get to see the manifestation of what's on paper, like in real time. But what do you think, like, is part of your joy that you're giving them, um, and it sounds like a power thing, so I don't mean it like that, but like that you're just giving them not just permission, but more clarity or like what, what, what do you think one of the, the things that you love most about doing it? Yeah, giving them permission. And I see how it sounds like a power thing and it's so not, but giving them yeah, permission yes. to be themselves. Yes. Like sometimes I'm naming things that they've kind of known but haven't owned yet. Yes. Um, for me, it was my intuition, which our friend Meg kept telling me, Kelsey, you're super intuitive. Kelsey, you're super intuitive. And she's one of the first people that like, I really, I thought I, I started to own it. it. And then I looked at my chart, which is like, my whole theme is being super intuitive. And I was like, oh, Meg is so right. And this is what I'm here for. <laughs> and Meg, Meg, who is Wicked intuitive. Yes. <laughs> You're like, it's, I always say like somebody will write to me like all the time. And it's not that I can't accept um, uh, a compliment because I'm getting way better at receiving love. Lifetime, lifetime project, right? We're getting better at receiving love because I'm really good at advocating for others and shining lights on others, but I'm getting better at doing it for myself. Um, but wait, where was I going with it? Oh, so somebody will write to me and say, KK, you're a nice thing, nice thing, nice thing, nice thing. And I always write back, like takes one to no one. It, you know, it's like, it's helpful. You can recognize it because you have something of that in yourself. And so Meg being able like, yeah, I've, like it's, you know, it's so fun too, especially having all my friends who are getting like readings with you and stuff like that. Um, or a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, it's like going, it's like them coming back to you and saying, and she told me this and I'm this. And the people who know them are like, no shit, Sherlock. Like, yeah. no, nah. But we sometimes have blinders on our own brilliance and our own bullshit, but also especially on our brilliance. Like we can't always see ourselves clearly. Mm -hmm. oh, can we, do we have time to talk about the specific and non-specific oh, a little I was, more? Yeah, I have to go in like 10, no, about yeah, about 10 minutes and then- Okay, and, yes. so let me, let me explain this part. So we touched a little bit on the difference between specific and non-specific. People who are here to be specific are here for strategy, um, five-year plans, being super specific in this online business space. We hear a lot about like, <sighs> what make this specific number, like, you know, <laughs> state it, say it out loud. What is your specific financial goal? If you're an athlete, what is the specific okay. time you're going for? Um, and then like get super specific on who your ideal client oh is. Oh my God. Like, yes. That's the one. All right. You guys who are uh, listening and not watching, I just took up a pen and I was pretending like I was stabbing myself in the eye with it. I was a member of like Marie Forleo's B school, like a gazillion years ago. The very first thing, one of the very first things they had you do was what's your ideal client avatar to this day. 
I'm like, I don't fucking know Marie. And I love Marie, but I'm like, I don't know. Don't ask me to tell you like whenever they do that, right? Like here's like, even on, on my thing, like here's a piece of paper, right? It's got a bunch of numbers on it. They'll say, pick a specific number. This is me between 250,000 and a million. Like, I don't know, like don't, because here's the thing. I know that something way smarter than me, whether you want to call that God source, spirit, the divine soul, I don't care, a spiritual team, right? Is way smarter than me and I will limit myself. I will pick a, I'm like, I will pick a number that is like either way too small or isn't even the right answer. So like, don't make me choose. I want the universe to tell me. Am I making sense? I know you understand where I'm coming from, right? Like when people try to make me be super specific sometimes, it's painful. Yeah, so KK and I are both non-specifics. So basically when they ask us to come up with a number, we're like, purple? <laughs> Friday? <laughs> exactly. <God>. So, <laughs> so I was, before I learned about human design, I was in a space where I was hearing so much. Kelsey, you have to be specific. I was feeling totally bullied by it. Like the only <laughs> thing missing for you is you have to be specific. And then I learned this piece about some of us are specific and some of us are non-specific and I'm non-specific and holy hell, yes. Oh, I can breathe. I'm really not made for that. And it totally blocks my flow if I try to be specific. So permission to be non-specific to permission. This is our emoji, the hands up that I don't know. It's that open palm receiving permission to say, Hey universe, what do you got? Send it our way, please. I know I want to feel this way. I just want to feel, I just want to be me. Send it my way, please. Man, I, did you guys hear that? I just want to be me. I think in so much of any kind of coaching work or mentoring work, and especially deep work of sacredness or spirituality or whatever, people want to feel seen and heard and understood and like they matter. And I just think that human design is just, I always say, so in, in yoga, in Kripalu yoga, I'm a certified Kripalu yoga teacher for like a gazelle. So I feel old now. And I'm like, how have I been anything for over 20 years? Like, I'm like, what? How old am I now? So there's a, a, a song that they used to sing to us in Shavasana. That was, you know, the ocean refuses no river. And I always think of like, whether it's tarot cards or um, reading this or getting this chart done or knowing your astrology birth chart or blah, 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 blah. They're all just rivers. They're all just rivers. And human design chat is just another way. It's just another way of the flow to the source, right? To the truth of yourself. One of the beautiful, like a kaleidoscope, it's just one of the facets on the wheel that we turn. So you guys, if it um, resonates with you, if any of this, this is what I always say, here's how you know. If it made you go, huh, that's interesting, right? Or like, ooh, if some part of you got a little lit up, a little sparkly, a little curious, if it piqued your curiosity, I'm just going to encourage you. This isn't a sales thing. I'm not, I'm, Kelsey, there's no plan here. She's not telling me to say this. I'm just telling you. I know that after my reading, I was just like, yeah, mother. <laughs> like I, I'm, like I just, I just felt like, like I landed even more fully in my body and in myself. And it was just like this, this, it just gave me even more um, confidence and courage to express myself as I am this time around, like, and to do it. So um, Kelsey, I'll probably have to have Kelsey on a show, another, another show again, because I really feel like we could talk for hours and hours and hours. But you guys, if this resonated with you, if this landed in your heart, if it made you curious, please reach out to her. So Kels, tell the beautiful people how they can get in touch with you and um, where to find the link to click the thing, like whatever they need to do to work with you. All right. So go get your, schedule your human design reading at kelseyabbott.com slash human design. And you can find all sorts of things on my website. Um, and then on Instagram, come play. I'm at kelseyabbottcpc. Kelsey Abbott CPC and that cert, so what does the CPC stand for? It's certified professional coach. Because there are lots of Kelsey Abbotts and that was already taken. I when I first tried to find you, I was like, 
there, ha, there are, there's only one Kelsey Abbott in my world. Like, there's <laughs> a lot of Kelsey Abbott's. And I was like, what is happening? So you guys like, go do it. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. It is so much fun. You learn so much. Kelsey, you're going to feel her love the whole time that she's like talking to you about you. And it's just one of the things about human nature is people call a spade a spade. You guys don't deny this. We love to hear about ourselves. We love to know our astrology reading for the day. We love to know what special, 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 you know, think about it like Enneagram. Everybody wants to know what's my Enneagram or what's, what are the, what's the things Kels, when you find out if you're like a ENJF or an IN. You're Myers-Briggs. You're Myers-Briggs. And human design has given me a new perspective on those. Yeah. Perfect. That's going to be, okay. I'm going to talk about that Privately, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. So I'm fascinated by all these things and- What I love about human design too, you guys, which makes it a little different is something like an Enneagram, they're asking you to self-identify. So we often tend to lean towards what we want to be, not necessarily what we are. But I think with human design, why it's so cool is you plug in the information. There's no getting around what, what it is, right? It's like, this is what it is in this system. And it's just a system. So I always say, like, have some fun, go get it done. You're, I know if you do, please let me know. And if you do reach out for Ke- to Kelsey to get one, let her know that I sent you or how you heard it. Cause I love, I love to know which one of my friends or my people are like going to her. Um, so Kelsey, thank you so much for being on the show. I loved having you and I love you so much. And did it stop raining so you can go ride your bike? It did. I think. I think. Getting there? <laughs> it's getting there. I'm going to have her dry ride at some point, mostly dry at least. Is there, um, is there anything else you want to say to the people? Um, she also, you guys, um, there's a series on your podcast. Tell them about that. Yes. yes, we've got, so I did a solo episode going more in depth into those five energy types. And then I did this series with, um, I did a generator who is known as Karen Kenny, um, <laughs> a two projectors, a reflector, a manifester and a manifesting generator just talking to them about they, these are people that I hand picked because they are living their human design experiment. And it's called an experiment because like, you know, we're living it, we're living it. And then it's like a balance beam. We're totally owning it and whoops, we fall off. Um, and I've got some, a couple more people coming on. And then I've done some recent human design play times where I've had conversations with other human design readers and we've just totally geeked out on all things human design. So if you like, welcome to the rabbit hole. If you are here in human design, I got you. Yeah. It's so great, you guys. And it's so fun too. like follow her on Instagram and her podcast again is the find your awesome. And who doesn't want to find their awesome, right? It's like so great. And there's some really good stuff. And on Instagram, like I said, she's always doing posts that is kind of reflecting back what it is to kind of be like that. Like she'll drop a thing and it's like, you know, oh, if you're like, um, I'm not doing a very good job explaining this, but it's kind of fun because it's like, you get to go see like, oh, what did she say about what generators are like? And it's like, yes, because I'm sure um, it's probably also, and I know we don't have time to talk about it, um, whichever one you are, it it informs probably, I imagine how you navigate um, all kinds of things like in particular right now, like COVID-19 or when different things come up in your life, I think having a greater understanding of yourself allows you to navigate through this world and especially the unexpected um, with more grace, more compassion, uh, more of it, maybe a sense of humor, right? Those kinds of things. So um, everything that you can learn with Kels is just going to be super helpful, I think. Thank you, KK. You're the sweetest. Oh God. It's my you. pleasure. I was so excited to get to talk to you and just thank you so much for, um, for being on the show. And I can't wait to share it with everybody. And so you guys, you can just, uh, you know, go to the, the, to the episode link to get all her stuff and you'll see it. And I'm telling you, if you get a reading, I want you to report back to me right? Be steadfast, be steadfast, be resolute, and then make your full report because I want to hear all about it. And I'm, because I'm always curious to hear what people are. It's fascinating to me. So you guys, I see you. I celebrate you. I appreciate you. If you're listening, if you can hear the sound of my voice, thank you so much for listening and tuning in. And I love you. And you are the love and the light of the world. So wherever you go, may you leave the people, the places, the animals, the world, better than how you found it. Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. Bye. Hey, you guys. Thank you 
so much for tuning in to this episode of the Karen Kenny Show. <laughs> I super duper appreciate your time, friendship, and support. And look, if something that I shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours, I'd love to hear about it. So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days. And let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing.